Hello there. It's us again, Miro, your friendly neighborhood IP convergence distributor. What a crazy and eventful two years it's been. I don't know about you, but we sure do need a break from the constant influx of life-defining news that just seems to keep on coming. We miss you. We miss sharing our stories with you in person. We miss our wonderful events, our trainings, and our entertaining coffee sessions. Still, the tide is beginning to turn. The sun is starting to shine, and we are beginning to see the end of the tunnel. 18 months ago, our dear president declared a state of emergency and sent us all home. While most of the country was still grappling with what this meant, we all went straight to work. Our industry was cast into the spotlight. Our somewhat unglamorous activities were deemed essential. We rallied to keep our country connected, and rally we did. Whether it was connecting homes wirelessly or through fiber, extending Wi-Fi coverage in our homes, adding those extra layers of security to our businesses, or ensuring our communication systems remained robust to enable us to work from home. We all rallied to the core. So here's to our heroes, the service providers, the resellers, system integrators and end users who continue to go above and beyond to carry our people through this turbulent time. We see you and we thank you for your enduring efforts. There was a lot of back and forth as to whether or not we should host an event this year. With the pandemic still looming, a global supply chain shortage and stage four load shedding, it seemed as if all the reasons for us not to host were right in front of us. But then we remembered our purpose, our calling, to be an inspiration to our industry, our customers, suppliers and colleagues in everything we do. Not only did we decide to host an event, we decided to pull out all the stops to bring you a captivating experience like none other. With informative insights on our industry and compelling new product releases, this year's IPCon will be one for the ages. A saying that has rung through the corridors of every Miro branch around the continent is that a calm sea never made no skill sailor. And man, have these waters been choppy. But before I get too far ahead of myself, we want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this experience, for it will surely be one to remember. Welcome to IPCon 2021. Now that we're all sitting comfortably, let's talk a little bit about what's in store for today. We have an action-packed lineup and the next two days are sure to be enthralling. What we have up today is our keynote addresses from our leadership team. Then we have a very exciting new product range release, which I'm sure you're gonna really enjoy and find inspiring value from. And lastly, and certainly mostly not least, we're going to have our industry tech talks, specific sections that cater for our technology segments within our vast portfolio. And to make things a little bit more fun, we've added a, a questionnaire giveaway that's going to be run after each concurrent uh, technology section. So stay tuned for that. We'll give you a little bit more details about when that's going to run. But for now, to talk about our agenda, we're gonna be going through our leadership um, uh, in introduction, who's going to give us a keynote address, then we're going to have um, the new product release, then we're going to go into smart home and IoT, into carrier wireless, broadband wireless, and lastly security. But let's take it away, Miro Leadership.
Good morning. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to IPCON 2021. At Miro, we have a clear and simple vision to serve as an inspiration to the industry, our customers and our colleagues through everything we do. And one of the major driving forces in us achieving this vision is knowing that simply distributing a product is not enough. We believe in sharing our knowledge to assist our partners in navigating the exciting but often challenging IP convergent landscape. And although we are a technology company, our business remains focused on people. It is in this spirit that IPCOM was born. It is our way of bringing together you, our valued partners, the vendors who represent our best of breed brands, and our team of experts so that we can share our vision for the future, showcase the latest developments in IP convergence, and the solutions they present to empower you to connect communities. From relatively humble beginnings over a decade ago, IPCON has grown to become some of Southern Africa's premier IP convergence conference. And two years ago in 2019, this culminated in our biggest IPCON event to date, held at the Vodacom Dome and attended by thousands. But like almost every area of our lives over the last 18 months, IPCON was forced to adapt and has been held virtually since 2020. We would prefer a physical event to engage with you in person, but our ability to continue to bring you a world-class conference from the comfort of your home, office, or anywhere in the world highlights that across the technology value chain, connectivity is king. We are grateful to be able to host this event virtually again, but we are hopeful that this time next year, we will once again be welcoming you in person at IPCON 2022. While the last year has continued to present us with new and unprecedented challenges, we are blessed to be part of an industry as resilient as ours. Connectivity and IP convergence have been central to accelerated and continued market disruptions, opening up new and exciting opportunities. Over the next two days, we will be exploring and sharing these developments with you. In the mornings, our team of experts will be hosting discussions and sharing industry best practices insights and new developments in the technologies that make up our product and solutions portfolio. Each afternoon, we will be hosting brand specific sessions in four virtual conference rooms that will showcase the latest developments and solutions from our best of breed brands and the opportunities they present to empower you to grow your business. You can check the schedule to make sure you join the sessions you are most interested in. But if you miss something, don't worry. One of the benefits of a virtual conference is that the sessions will be recorded so you can view them at a later time. Thank you for taking the time to join us. We look forward to engaging with you over the next two days. I will now hand over to our national sales manager, Caleb Chetty, to share what it is that makes Miro the leading IP convergence partner in Southern Africa. Hi, thank you for joining us for IPCon 2021. We are really excited to have you a part of this year's biggest event in our industry. Today, I'd like to briefly take you through the history of Miro and where it all began, discuss some of the challenges the market faced and how we grew to become one of the leading ICT distributors in South Africa. In the early 2000s, customers in the ICT industry faced many challenges of having to order wireless and networking equipment online from platforms such as eBay. These products had to then be assembled from scratch and carried no local type approvals, not to mention the lack of support or training. There really wasn't an industry for a steady supply of products backed by expertise. We saw this need and knew that something had to be done. This is how Miro was born. Our goal was to build a business that could supply the industry with only the best of breed products, offer excellent after sales support, along with training and sales experts to help build tailor-made scalable solutions. Since 2003, we have added numerous brands and products to our ever-growing portfolio to provide complete IP convergence solutions that consists of VoIP, Fiber, IPCC TV, Access Control, Power Solutions, IoT, and Wide and Wireless Networking. We have always been focused on providing a frictionless customer experience. Last year, we launched our brand new Mirror website, which is a full B2B and B2C platform that allows our customers to generate quotes, place orders, view their purchase history, check stock availability 24 seven, and download custom price lists, all while receiving notifications at any given time, day or night. We have also changed our operating hours at our Centurion and Cape Town branches to include opening on Saturdays till 12 p.m. 
to better serve our customers over weekends. We have also launched a new value-added service to our existing service offering, pre-configuration, for large batch configurations on certain products, such as routers and access points. We offer a full range of services, such as pre-sale solutions planning, after-sales technical support, financing solutions such as IPFIN for project financing, as well as certified training. Miro Academy is our fully-fledged online training platform that allows our customers to get access to high-quality, in-house and brand-specific certified trainings, all from the comfort of your home or office. To add to all of this, Miro has a national footprint with branches in Durban and Nelspreet, with our headquarters based here in Centurion. We have also just moved and opened a brand new state-of-the-art facility in Cape Town with a complete training center and increased stock holding to support the Western Cape region. Being industry leaders and being affiliated with the likes of WAPA has allowed us to support ISPs for the last 20 years and really empower our customers to connect communities. We have gained significant market insight and learned only the best practices and always pick up on the latest trends and cutting edge technologies. We understand that we must share our knowledge and empower our customers through technical assistance and training. IPCON is our way of giving back to the community we serve. We look forward to spending the next two days unpacking everything we have to share. Thanks for that great introduction, Caleb. It has surely been a busy and innovative year for our teams at Miro. The world has changed over the last two years and technology has taken over as man's best friend. As the lines between the physical and digital worlds get increasingly blurry, the need for responsive, high-capacity, uncapped connectivity increases. With the increase, we see our worlds turn into digital landscapes, with hardware and software specifically designed to deliver digital experiences that enhance our lifestyles as well as determine our features. As a stocking IP technology solutions distributor, one of our most pressing challenges for the year has been the global electronics component shortage and the immense pressure we've seen on the global logistics system. The current semiconductor shortage is the result of silicon wafers and other electronic component manufacturers shutting down over last year's hard lockdown period and the surge in demand for consumer electronics as the global workforce shifted towards working from home. On top of this chipset shortage, the global logistics system has also suffered from imbalances with containers getting stuck in the wrong countries and manufacturing of new containers coming to a halt during lockdown. These market forces has pushed the cost of goods up dramatically and left a large supply gap in our industry. This has pushed us to think differently about how we manage our inventory and our promise to our customers. All indicators predict that the semiconductor shortage will stay with us for at least another year and further rises in component and logistics costs are on the horizon. This means that forward planning has never been this important to our industry and together with our world-class teams and partner ecosystem, we will continue to solve the challenges of stock availability and better connected future. We understand that our role to provide the connectivity and conversion solutions that power African businesses and homes of the future has become increasingly important and that fiber and wireless technologies are complementary to each other and both plays a role in connecting the unconnected. This is why we work really hard to ensure that our customers always has access to the newest and largest range of products and can purchase our technology solutions at any time of the day and receive their orders in the shortest times. Our product portfolio comprises of all the threads in the connectivity fabric, from the communications tower with eco-friendly power solutions, to the fiber to the home and fiber to the business head ends, to the device that delivers connectivity inside our homes and businesses. As an example of how connectivity requirements has accelerated, Miro sales statistics indicates that our typical customers switch over from Wi-Fi 5 to Wi-Fi 6 twice as fast as which they switched over from Wi-Fi 4 to Wi-Fi 5. Connectivity has opened doors to online and a connected everything. There has been a huge paradigm shift globally in the way we educate our students, in the way we meet with our teams and business partners, in the way we secure our assets, and even in the way we open the front door for our family and friends. Today, it brings me huge pleasure to bring to you 
the first of our IoT meets wireless home automation product lines. And to take you through this, we hand over to Maggie. Hi, my name is Maggie, and I'll be introducing Acara, Vessel, and True Audio. Mira has identified two opportunities, smart home automation and smart audio automation. We have expanded our offering in the last couple of years to include Wi-Fi and wireless technology. These two connectivity brands were a no-brainer because they seamlessly integrate into our existing product portfolio. Mira has chosen Acara, Vessel and True Audio as home automation partners, not only because of the high quality of the products that these brands offer, but because Miro is all about connecting communities. And what better way than to onboard these connectivity brands and their products? Expanding your connectivity not only by having Wi-Fi in your home, but by connecting devices throughout your home for a smarter and seamless way to remote control your security, prevention action plans, and your entertainment needs and requirements. I would like to start on Vessel and True Audio. Vessel is a very well-known American brand in the sound industry. Their amplifiers pack an easy to use punch for any home automation system. True Audio promises to deliver the sound of innovation through their wonderfully designed speakers. These speakers also seamlessly and easily connect to the Vessel amplifiers. True Audio has a range of speakers from in-ceiling to bookshelf speakers, depending on the look and feel that you are trying to go for. True Audio speakers will hide away or stand out and make a statement. Vessel is an audio streaming amplifier that allows you to stream your music to your home audio system and have multiple rooms playing in complete unison while others stream their own playlist. You can stream from the apps you love using any device to any room. Vessel works with all music apps that utilize AirPlay 2 or Chromecast built in. To name a few, Spotify, Deezer, YouTube Music, Pandora, and many more. No third-party apps are necessary. Vessel also works with Siri and the Google Assistant. We have the X series, which consists of a single zone, A1X, three zone, A3X, and six zone, A6X, now proudly available at Miro. To further extend connectivity throughout your home, Miro decided to onboard Acara to create a smart home. Acara has a wide range of products in order to help you create an effective, simple and elegant smart home. Everything from the central brain of the operations, which is the hub, to cameras, motion sensors, door and window sensors, water leak sensors, switches, smart roller, shade controllers, temperature and humidity sensors, to the controllers in the range, like the Cube and wireless mini switch. Creating the living space you want has never been so affordable. Acara is a high quality, affordable IoT brand that is extremely easy to install and use. You can create your own rules using the Acara app, for example. Create time rules between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. When motion is detected, the Acara hub's built-in alarm will notify you. Other instances, for example, are if there's light detected from the motion sensor, the nightlight will turn off and vice versa. If no light is detected, the nightlight will turn on. This is all made possible through the if this, then that rules on the app. The possibilities are endless and your imagination is your only limitation. Thank you, Maggie, for that insightful look at our very new, exciting product range. And thank you to the Miro leadership for providing us a little bit more insight into why we do what we do and what makes Miro so very special. Now, in case you couldn't get enough of her, I'm going to ask Maggie Kruger to come back to delve a little bit deeper into IoT, specifically regarding the industry at whole, what to expect and what are the aspirations from Miro and our vendors looking to enter into this market and how can we help you empower communities? Maggie, take it away. Miro saw a gap in the market in regards to our customers and the IoT sector. A lot of ISPs have now added additional services to their portfolio. What better way than to bring in products that can make your life simpler and smarter? Let's start with some interesting IoT facts. 
households have 10 connected devices on average, and this will rise to 50 by the end of 2021. Worldwide IoT spending surpassed $1 trillion in 2020 alone. Spending on IoT endpoint security solutions will reach $631 million in 2021. Every second, 127 devices hook up to the internet for the first time. There will be 1.9 billion 5G cellular subscriptions by 2024. The number of cellular IoT connections is expected to reach 3.5 billion in 2023. The biggest reason for IoT investment is cost reduction. The smart home IoT market will grow to $53.45 billion by 2022. IoT is currently kicking off in a big way in the industry and can assist many businesses and home users in many different ways. For example, as they say, prevention is better than cure. Why not stop an incident from happening before it actually happens? For example, place the water leak sensor beneath your geyser. When the water leak sensor detects that the, there's a water leakage, you will then be notified so you can take action before your geyser bursts and destroys anything else in your home. Take the ring range of products that Mira offers. Wouldn't it be easier to alert your security company of an intruder lurking around before they get a chance to invade your personal space and your home? Similarly, with other IoT use cases, such as agriculture, wouldn't it be easier, quicker and more affordable to have a device that tells you if the soil where your crops have been planted is too dry and needs water? What if this device could then automatically turn on the irrigation system until the soil moisture is 100%? When we talk about IoT and smart home, we are essentially talking about smart devices, which enable us to work smarter, remotely, and a lot more efficiently at all times. Whether it is for our own protection, entertainment, security, or just to simplify our daily lives, IoT and smart home devices are here to stay and here to help. To understand what IoT can do for us, we need to look at these key benefits, which are monitoring data, ease of access, speedy operation, adopting new standards, better time management, automation and control, and then best of all, saving money. A smart device is a form of IoT. IoT essentially is intelligent devices which are connected to each other and the internet. The devices perform specific tasks, such as turn on and off. There are many different examples of smart devices, such as bulbs, cameras, doorbells, and many more. These smart devices are easily managed by an app on your phone and are connected to your network. Connected appliances, smart home security systems, wearable health monitors, smart factory equipment, ultra high speed wireless internet, biometric cybersecurity scanners, all of these form part of IoT and Smart Home IoT. For a more in-depth look at the specific products mentioned, please make sure you attend our breakout rooms later today. The primary and main advantage of IoT is monitoring. It helps us to identify the air quality in your home. It can also provide more data that could not previously have been possible to collect so easily. For instance, Knowing that you are low on printer ink could save you another trip to the store in the near future. Also, monitoring the expiration of products will improve safety. Another great feature that Acara has is that you can monitor your power usage. Right now, you can easily gain the required information in real time from almost anywhere. It only takes a smart device and internet connection. We use Google Maps to see our location instead of asking a person in real life. Booking tickets is simpler than ever. Information is also easily accessible, even from the latest scientific research or business analysis. It's only a click away. All this data is pouring in and it enables us to complete multiple tasks with amazing speed. For example, IoT makes automation effortless. Smart industries automate repetitive tasks, thus allowing employees to invest their time and effort into more challenging things. As IoT is an ever-changing topic, its changes are minimal compared to the other techs of the high-tech world. Without IoT, it would be complicated for us to keep track of all of the latest things. Overall, it is a clever time-saving tool. We can look up the latest news on our phone during our daily commute or check a blog about our favorite pastime. 
purchase an item at an online store, we can do almost all the things we need from the palm of our hands. Eventually, we end up with much more time for ourselves. Due to physical objects being connected and controlled digitally and centrally with wireless technology structure, there is huge amounts of automation and control in the workings. Without human interference, the machines are communicating with each other, providing faster and timely outputs. Another main advantage of IoT is saving money. If the cost of tagging and monitoring are less compared with the amount of money saved, then this is the reason for Internet of Things, and it's being very widely adopted. IoT mainly aids to be helpful to people in their daily life by making their devices communicate with each other in an efficient manner, thereby saving and conserving energy and cost. This being said, let's talk about different IoT technologies and where they fit in in the big scheme of things. LoRaWAN is a low-power IoT protocol that comprises the LoRa radio technology, allowing for an open, reliable and economical network deployment. By contrast, NB-IoT is a licensed LTE radio technology, offering low latency and strong security, but at a much steeper price point. A low-power wide area network, LP-WAN, which is like LoRaWAN, is a type of wireless telecommunication wide area network designed to allow long-range communication at a low bitrate, such as sensors operated on a battery. I want to use Micritic LoRaWAN as an example. This is created to offer you the capacity to reliably monitor basic information across large areas without electricity infrastructure, such as farms, factories and mines. LoRaWAN is the answer. Other networks can also be used to manage and monitor devices, but they lack LoRaWAN's core advantages of low power consumption and long-range possibilities. These capabilities make LoRaWAN easier, quicker and more cost-effective to deploy. With LoRaWAN, you can easily deploy hundreds of battery-powered sensors, which can last up to a couple of years, and monitor them wirelessly from a distance of up to 10 kilometers. LoRaWAN is a global standard, which means it allows for multiple devices to interoperate seamlessly on the same protocols and eliminate the need for proprietary devices from a single vendor. This also inspires innovation in the industry, with individuals deciding how, where or what the technology is used for. Milesight also uses the LoRaWAN IoT platform. Milesight is a professional IoT company that leverages the top trending technologies to simplify the process of data collection, storage and retrieval in order to accomplish the goal, connecting things to the cloud and have an array of exciting devices for any use case. Agriculture, smart city, smart energy, smart retail, transportation, medical, automation and outdoor office they have something for every scenario. They are also a member of the LoRa Alliance and are always at the forefront of technology, standards and new deployments. Let's use agriculture as an example. Smart irrigation systems are trending at the moment simply because it tailors watering arrangements automatically to meet specific needs, which significantly improves outdoor water use efficiencies. Smart irrigation systems can optimize water levels based on things such as soil moisture and weather predictions. This is done with moisture sensors that communicate with the PLC and help inform the system whether the landscape is in need of water. As we know, reservoir level loggers feature sensitive pressure sensors that can detect and determine the slightest of changes to water level and can send alerts to admins or operators alerting them to the situation. This means that reservoir level monitoring is commonly used in some of the following applications. Flood monitoring. Water is the most valuable resource for agriculture. Knowing the levels of the tanks, troughs and reservoirs will ensure the availability of the water you need. The accurate monitoring reduces the risk and gives you better control through this water level monitoring solution. With the improvements of people's living standards, the quality and safety of agricultural products are attracting more and more people's attention. Agriculture products must be safe, healthy and traceable in order to make consumers truly reassured in the modern market competition. Therefore, digital farming consists of the LoRa technology and the Internet of Things is solving the problem of how to feed a rapidly growing population across the globe. 
In conclusion, Miro is staying at the forefront of technology and the forefront of our customers' requirements. IoT is the way of the future for all industries, and we are excited about the new products we have onboarded so far. Keep an eye out for more exciting and new IoT brands jumping on board this ever-growing technology-driven space with Miro. Thank you, Maggie, for that insightful look into smart home and IoT. We are sure that this segment is going to explode in the coming months. Now, before we get into our giveaways, I just wanted to mention that IPCon 2021 is proudly sponsored and driven by our fantastic partners and our vendors, our gold sponsors, SNOM, uh, SIA, Cambium, and Uniview and then a plethora of different silver sponsors. These guys have made IPCon um, real and we couldn't do it without them. So thank you to our sponsors, but let's get into the really fun part of the day. So we've got, up, we've got 50,000 rands worth of giveaway. So that's 50,000 rands worth of free stuff that could be yours, but you're gonna have to earn it. So what we've decided to do is to make things interesting. So we would want everyone to compete in our Kahoot game. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the app together. It's very simple, ladies and gentlemen. So I would like for you to all open up your phones, get your smartphones out. Let's get onto the Android Play Store. Let's get onto the iStore. And let's go and download Kahoot together. Go onto the store, search Kahoot, K-A-H-O-O-T. Download it. Might take a while, depending on your internet speed. If you need better internet, please reach out to us. We can sort you out. Um, apart from that, we're just going to go through the actual installation behind it. And then once this is done, we're going to be using this app for the remainder of the two days for each one of the technology sections. So we're going to be doing um, a winner for each technology section, which will have a prize, and then we'll have an overall winner at the end of um, the next two days. So like I said, guys, we've got lots of awesome prizes up for grabs. So please do not miss these uh, giveaway quizzes. All right, if everyone has done that and downloaded their app, let's open it up. We're going to go into Kahoot now. It's going to ask, it's going to give you the welcome page, then you're going to go next. It's going to ask you question one of two. It's going to say choose which account type you are. You're going to say personal. It's going to say thanks. It's going to give you a thousand points. That thousand points is not necessarily for you. Ask you how old you are. Shh, don't worry, this information is secret. We're not going to take how old you are and show anyone. So you can put whatever age you want, just please be over the age of 18. So I'm gonna put my age there, gonna give it. Okay, awesome, one last thing. Who will you play Kahoot with most often? Just put other. All right, cool, that's it. Now it's gonna ask you, do you have a game pin? And we do have a game pin. So that's that beautiful cube right there in the center. I want you to press that cube. All right, then it's going to take you to a screen that says Kahoot, enter game pin. Now, our game pin for Smart Home IoT, listen up, is, one, is 9134959. I'll say it again. That's 9134959. All right, so we're going to give everyone around about a minute or two just to enter. Just remember to press live on the stream. It's very critical because the questions will be going through live. Check through on your um, smartphone so that you can do it simultaneously. The leaderboard will be made available on our live stream. Just make sure you select live. Again, guys, the code is 9134959. Let's get into it. Can't wait to see who comes out on top. All right, everyone, I just wanted to explain a little bit about what you're seeing on the screen. So we've got a few people hopping in. So as you'll see, 
uh, there are predetermined names. This was done to avoid any unsavory selections. So make sure that you put the correct email address in so that we can get you your prize. If we don't have a correct email address, we're going to keep the prize. So just make sure that you put in the correct details and we're going to go live with the questions in just a minute. Good luck and may the best person win.
All right, looks like we have a jam-packed first uh, uh, quiz session. Um, okay, I just wanted to play the rules to everyone. So the way that the quiz is going to work is that it is the person with the fastest correct answers. So unfortunately, you don't get a prize if you answer them all quickly and wrong, and you don't get a prize if you answer them all correctly but slow. So it's the fastest person to answer the most correct questions. And if, there, if you do have a break in your internet connection, you will unfortunately lose access to the Kahoot. So just make sure that your, your Wi-Fi and everything is ready to go. Um, I'm really excited for this first Kahoot. I think my money's on Silver Condo or the Charming Tiger, but I think Mystery Sea Lion will take it at the end. But let's see how it goes. I'm going I'm to walk you through the first question just so that everyone can get you know, nice and warm for it. Let's go. All right, so the first question is, in what ways is IoT energy efficient? Small devices use less power. They use a lot less battery power. Why are devices that don't take power all the time? Twenty seconds. Let's see who's come out on top. Oh, dearie me, I'm in 84th place. I'm tied with the lovely Falcon. So the answer is they use a lot less battery power. Let's use in the lead. Funny Raven, you are leading us. You were the first to answer this correct question. Uh, but the bold wallaby in fourth, I think, might surprise us towards the end. All right, so now that everyone has a, got a little bit more used to the manner in which we will conduct these sessions, we're going to let the quiz um, go on, and then we'll check in around about halfway. Enjoy.
After an inspiring win streak, Funny Raven seems to have dropped off slightly. It's now all about Blue Dolphin. Can Quick Pelican close the gap and will Hero Squad make it into the top two? Stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We've got four questions left. Wow, I haven't seen an energizing race like that since the American Grand Prix between Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. But our winner today goes to Mr. Captain Wilth. This is your prize, a TP-Link Deco. We will be messaging you shortly. Thanks for participating. And just to remind everyone that even though we're offering prizes per Kahoot session, we will be having an overall leader towards the end of the day where our grand prize 
will be announced. So stay tuned. We're going to run into a small intermission now, but don't go anywhere. Go grab yourself a, coffee, a cup of coffee, put some oats on the boil, and we'll see you soon.
I hope everyone is feeling rested after that intermission and ready for the next stage of IPCON 2021. But before we get into Carrier Wireless, I just wanted to remind everyone that in the afternoon we will be having breakaway sessions with all of our vendors. Please look in the description below and reserve your seat for vendor-specific breakaway sessions where our own suppliers will be going into their product portfolios, their roadmaps, and their aspirations for 2022. Now, without any further ado, I'd like to invite my colleague, Gabriella, to talk a little bit more about Carrier Wireless. Since its inception, wireless has grown in leaps and bounds, and its advancements in its technology still astound us to this day. We're going to talk a little bit about 17 gigahertz and 60 gigahertz, and do you really think that 20 gigab gigabits per second full duplex is possible? Gabriella, take it away. The name Miro has always been synonymous with wireless connectivity. Whether that be Wi-Fi for your home, your business, large public events where thousands of people require access, or even larger scale, long distance wireless connectivity, we always have the right solution for you. However, just having Wi-Fi connectivity is not enough. As we all know, Wi-Fi does not equal internet connection. Wi-Fi is only the medium of delivering connectivity to devices such as a laptop, a cell phone, or a tablet. You still need a breakout connection to the internet, whether that be older technology such as ADSL or fiber or wireless connectivity. We all know ADSL is pretty much a thing of the past and fiber, although delivering great reliability and throughput, is still a physical cable that requires a lot of time and labor to be deployed and obtaining way leaves can delay rollout by months, if not years. This is where wireless connectivity in many cases is still the only option to provide connectivity wherever needed, quickly and with fiber-like speeds. These wireless connections or networks require much less labor, saving time, money, and can connect remote areas where fiber networks might not be feasible. The equipment can even be powered off solar or turbine solutions where power is not readily available. Side note, speaking of power solutions, keep an eye out for our power solution segment tomorrow afternoon at 12. I mentioned fiber-like speeds via wireless. Yes, the technology has come a very long way and it developed drastically over the years. Network speeds and reliability also improved at a rapid pace. Over the past 15 or 16 years, Miro has seen, a technology, has seen the technology grow from a technology based on standard 2.4 and 5 gigahertz short range Wi-Fi chipsets to proprietary purpose-built custom silicon utilizing various frequencies with wireless network speeds ranging from 11 megabits per second all the way to today's 10 gigabits per second, soon to be 20 gigabits per second. But more on that later. At first, if you wanted wireless data connectivity from one point to the next, over a few hundred meters or even tens of kilometers, the answer was pretty much Mikrotik. Sure, there were others, but Mikrotik's affordability made wireless technology much more accessible to many. Miro used to supply the bare Mikrotik router boards and wireless mini PCI cards, which were built into outdoor enclosures with integrated antennas. This was a fairly cost-effective way of providing people with data, voice, and video connectivity, where existing copper infrastructure was just not available, maintained, or not reliable enough. Much later, manufacturers such as Cambium, Radwin, Ubiquiti, and Mimosa took a good long look at the technology and refined it to a much sleeker, easier to use form factor, even at reduced prices. Today, refined 5 GHz products such as Cambium Core, Ubiquiti Airfiber, Mikrotik Net, the Mimosa B5 series, and the Radwin 5000s are common in the WISP industry, all available from Miro, and have made wireless networks, dare I say, effortless to roll out. With a rapidly failing national telecoms provider, wireless demand grew at a phenomenal pace, and soon the freely available ISM frequencies of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz became overpopulated, and interference between networks became a major factor in certain areas. Wireless internet service providers, or WISPs, and other wireless network operators had to look elsewhere for interference-free solutions, and naturally another free-to-use ISM frequency was the answer. So, Miro sourced equipment such as SIA, operating on the 17 gigahertz frequency, a highly reliable point-to-point -point solution. And with the higher frequency, the benefit of higher capacity or network speeds made this an obvious choice. This allowed network operators to not only increase their network capacity, but also migrate their backbone networks away from the already congested 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrum, freeing up channel space for their last mile point-to-multipoint networks. 
Sears Alpha Plus Microwave Solutions allowed carriers up to 500 megabits per second full duplex or 1 gigabits per second aggregate speeds, while the standard 2 and 5 gigahertz equipment could only provide up to 300 megabits per second aggregated. However, thanks to the demand for data growing and ridiculously expensive mobile data prices, requirements quickly exceeded 17 gigahertz capacity limitations. Enter Sears Alpha Plus 2 and the next step in Miro's journey to connect the unconnected. Alpha Plus 2 made some great advances in technology and in some cases was able to more than double the capacity of the original Alpha Plus radios. Alpha Plus 2, a first for Mero, allowed us to offer licensed frequency solutions stepping away from the ISM frequencies, meaning a customer could apply for and obtain his very own frequency, allowing them to operate completely interference free. For Miro, this was an exciting new challenge, as catering for wider frequency spectrums and subbands meant that it was a bit more difficult to stick to our belief of being a stockholding distributor. In many cases, we had to order radio links specifically according to the license, and our customer was assigned and navigating the legality surrounding our national frequency regulator, ECASA. It was quite interesting at the times. Thanks to these challenges, we forged new partnerships with the likes of NEC, who offered subband free radio solutions for 8, 11, 15, 18, and 23 gigahertz. This meant we could now keep stock on hand and deliver to anyone when they need it, instead of having a customer wait for weeks while the radio is custom made according to their requirements. This was thanks to NEC's ingenious radio technology that allowed a much wider frequency spectrum, which could then be manually set when installing to the specific channel the regulator assigned regardless of the subband. In the process, we also became experts on the legalities of licensed spectrum and were able to start offering network planning services and ECASA license application assistance at no extra charge, thanks to our team of pre-sales technical experts. Today, this service not only applies to point-to-point -point radio solutions, but also point-to-multipoint, Wi-Fi and fiber network designs. From here, a relatively new term in the wireless networking space started to appear, namely millimeter wave. The physical millimeter wave size is anything between one millimeter and 0.1 millimeter. The width of a human hair, as opposed to a microwave, microwave, which ranges from 10 centimeters, roughly the size of a human hand, to one millimeter, the size of a pinhead. And as I mentioned before, with higher frequencies, we started to see higher capacities in network speeds. Here we offer two main point-to-point -point solutions, namely 60 gigahertz V-band and 80 gigahertz E-band. Both these frequencies have major advantages in the fact that equipment is readily available, and in the case of 60 GHz, the equipment is also very cost effective. 60 GHz, or V-band, also a free-to-use ISM frequency, was first incorporated into the 802.11 AD chipset, which never fully reached its potential in the likes of commercial Wi-Fi routers as it was intended. The reach in terms of distance is not only short due to the high frequency, but the frequency is also limited due to a phenomenon called oxygen absorption, where the absorption weakens or attenuates the 60 gigahertz signals over distance, so the signal cannot travel much further than the intended recipient on the other side. And if not planned carefully, the link might not even reach the recipient, especially in the case of outdoor wireless networks. This does, however, hold one major benefit in the fact that due to range limitations, there is very little to no interference on the frequency, hence the fact that it is regarded as a free-to-use frequency in most countries around the world. Network capacity has also drastically improved with the latest 802.11 AY chipset. From 1 gigabits per second to an unbelievable 15.5 gigabits per second with Cambium CNWave V5000, the frequency is capable of very short-range point-to-multipoint connections, However, in South Africa, ICASA limits us to point-to-point -point use of the frequency only. We do believe that with the likes of Facebook Telegraph rollouts worldwide, using 60 gigahertz, that ICASA will be opening the spectrum soon. But for now, best use this in your projects outside of South Africa. As mentioned, 60 gigahertz equipment is quite affordable thanks to the large manufacturers adopting the technology and mass producing for radio solutions for mostly sub 1.5 kilometer links. Moro keeps stock of the 60 gigahertz solutions from manufacturers such as IgniteNet, Cambium, Ubiquiti, Microtech, and soon Ciclu. 80 gigahertz, although a much higher frequency, is not affected by oxygen absorption and can now reach distances of up to 10 kilometers while maintaining uptime of around 99.9%. In some cases, we have seen clients in South Africa running links of up to 16 kilometers. 
80 gigahertz was definitely somewhat of a game changer, thanks to especially one manufacturer, Ciclu, who took the technology and created various options ranging from one gigabits per second, very cost-effective radios, all the way to 10 gigabits per second, full duplex radios. And it is still more affordable than any of its competitors in the market. The frequency also holds cost benefits in that ECASA regulates a portion of the spectrum as light licensed, meaning there is no complex applications required. No extended periods wasting, waiting for your license to be issued. And above all, license costs can be as little as your standard TV license in South Africa and is also paid annually. This has led to the adoption of the technology as the new latest standard in high capacity backhauling, and they're already in talks of doubling the link capacity to 20 gigabits per second. Like I said earlier, fiber likes speeds, just without the hassle and added costs of trenching. So whether you are in a rural area where there's little to no interference, looking for a high capacity five gigahertz backhaul, or in an urban metro plagued by interference and need your own license frequency, we've got you covered. We will assist you in planning and selecting the perfect solution that suits your requirements and pocket. We will assist you with training so you're able to build your own wireless network. We will even assist with a hieroglyphic ICASA application. And once you are the proud owner of a state-of-the-art wireless solution from Miro, thanks to our technical support team, we will support you with any troubleshooting and RMA queries you might have. Speak to one of our expert en sales engineers today. Thank you, Gabriella, for that awesome insight into Carrier Wireless. I think wireless has always struggled with reliability, coverage, and of course, capacity. But within the past 15 years, we've seen those hangups be completely overtaken by what are considered some really carrier grade brands. And wireless will continue to develop and will continue to be used in areas where fiber and pure fixed line cables can just not reach or it's not feasible. Now, the next guest that I'd like to uh, introduce you to is a close personal friend of mine, uh, someone that I enjoy spending time with and someone that I really believe brings a lot of value to our industry. And the organization that he uh, participates in is one that we've been in partnership with for many, many years. And that is the Wireless Access Providers Association or WAPA, as they are fondly known. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Paul Korma to the audience today. Take it away, Paul. Hello, all. And um, I hope you're enjoying uh, Miro Distribution IPCOM 2021. Um, my name is Paul Kolmer. I sit on the executive committee of WAPA, the Wireless Access Providers Association. And I just want today to tell you a little bit about WAPA and what we're doing for our members of which there are something in the region of 250 um, as we speak um, what we do and where the industry is and where i believe the industry is moving forward mm. at WAPA, we look after our members in uh, multiple regards with regards to regulatory compliance to training we have all the um, miro zero to hero um, training courses in the members only portal on the website free of charge and we're constantly um, uploading and upgrading other training um, into that portal. Within um, a few weeks um, we will also be loading the white paper and all the outcomes of the first commercial TV white space trial um, that I completed over the last two years which was funded with a million US dollars from the US Trade and Development Association. Um, the outcome of this trial is it commercially viable to build TB white space networks in South Africa? And the answer is yes, in certain applications it, it, it can fit in and it can work, work well. This is what we proved. So how you build them, how do you design them and all that, all that information will be available in, in that portal. And one of the, the spin-offs um, of that was also the fact we also tested the um, hotspot model on the end of the Wi-Fi hotspot model on the end of these white space links, um, which in itself became um, a sort of self-contained business model that could function outside a white space environment. 
Um, it's linked to Facebook Express Wi-Fi, which is a very user-friendly interface. It works very well, and it's moved away from the price per gig model that's very common in hotspots to a more um, access pass model, where you buy uncapped um, access passes uh, to the Wi-Fi. And it, it works well. So the whole design of that moving forward is really an asset to anyone in the industry to change their business models and get access to the additional incomes that that can generate. We are also, however, um, we have completed the final the, um, 2021 census, um, which our members completed. The result of that census of represents who we are in the industry um, collectively how many people we employ, the areas we cover, and um, the services that we were offering out there, which is good for you know, the government and regulator to acknowledge who, who WAPA is. And we're currently busy um, on our members' behalf of the industry. We are approaching ICASA just before the beginning of December this year um, for additional spectrum um, in unlicensed what we are primarily tracing, as I say, we've already secured um, the 470 to 694 megahertz, which is the TV white space unlicensed spectrum. We will be looking at Wi-Fi 6E, which is 1.2 gigahertz from 5.9 um, all the way up to 7.1. The good thing about this spectrum, it's already been granted in the US by FCC and Ofcom in UK and various other countries uh, within the world. The good news is that a lot of Western wireless guys out there already have um, equipment on their towers that can go into the lower six gig band, this one. So you will get all that extra available spectrum without having to do any um, equipment upgrades. We'll also be looking at trying to get 24 gigahertz on point to point. Um, I know Miro already has equipment that can do that that's being sold because it is legal in Namibia so that will be a very um, easy transition to make and then moving on to the higher bands in the V band which is 60 gigahertz um, of devices that we call Facebook Terragraph which is a one gig um, mesh network but at this moment in time it is only for point to point and not multi-point. So we will be trying to secure with the CASA to get um, multi-point um, availability. We have a, um, a very good and getting better relationship um, at the CASA at our recent um, event, in regional event in Cape Town in Stellenbosch um, a week or so ago. Um, we actually had a, a CASA councillor um, present um, for the day and we will continue at next year's regional events where we do training, vendor registration, um, presentations and early around the country in, in different areas during the course of 2022. The importance of these events and ongoing work that, that WAP is doing is because we are living in a changing industry. And there's been this belief that threats are coming from everywhere. We've certainly seen the fiber operators moving away from the metro centers and into the smaller towns where the really the strongholdings of the, the wisps of the past. We've actually seen up to five different fiber providers um, actually digging on top of each other in, in the same town. And the open access model that um, many of our WAPA WISP members um, are using the, um, on that. The margins have become very, very small and hugely competitive with um, extremely long ROI. So, but, you know, all is not lost. There is no reason whatsoever why um, a wireless provider, as many of our members have, have done, is build your own layer one, two, three fiber networks. And I think the reluctance of some to get involved in this, they believe it's a very complicated exercise and it's a very expensive exercise. Um, I assure you it's not. And um, I've actually designed networks for members and members have built in, in certain towns in existing infrastructure builds with um, in complexes and um, 
cluster townhouses, estates, or um, municipal pole builds, we can certainly build a GPON, including backhaul core network, for under 4,000 Rand uh, per client. So it's not that expensive and it is doable. And we've got courses and training to teach you how to do that, not just the technical and construction side, but the business model that sits behind it. So you can do that. The other areas, and I think it's recently in the last couple of years, um, we're seeing um, satellites going crazy with Starlink, Project Kuiper, thousands of satellites are ringing for these new global clusters. And is this going to be a threat to WISPs? Well, in honesty, we don't know. Um, but I think moving forward, yes, in certain places, it's um, it could even be an asset to the WISPs if we look at it from an aggregated backhaul point of view. But in its early days, I don't think it's a bigger threat as, as some people believe it to be. What we've also seen um, moving forward is that both NTN and Vodacom are now moving um, into 5.8 gigahertz un unlicensed, um, rolling out nationally. Um, they're offering, obviously using very high-tech um, equipment. Um, uh, Vodacom are using Radwin and uh, MTN are using US manufactured Tirana. It enables them to offer fiber-like speeds over the air and at fiber-like prices. Mm. So that is a challenge for with moving forward because obviously the noise floors are going to uh, rise and these guys are going to be offering these, these high-speed um, connections at, at this very low-level pricing. So it is a time to rethink how you run the business case in your models. At WAPA, we're going to be here to assist you with that. Um, how we build a competitive network while playing the home ground advantage that you, you guys have in your individual towns that the big players do not have. And we can do that. There's lots of add-ons and other things. So whether it's you stretch out, you expand the, um, the, the hotspot model and take the pre prepaid income markets, whether you use, want to start building white space networks, um, the equipment is available from Miro. Radwin have type approved their uh, TV white space equipment at Icasa. So there's, there's lots happening. And we've also recently um, changed the way that we, uh, we do the coverage requests that come in that we send out to our members. And we now will allow you to actually upload your coverage max into the uh, WAPA website portal. So as a request comes in, it will be distributed to members who are operating in, in the towns where people are requiring that connectivity. So I think the industry is changing. Um, it is not traditionally the, the home of the wireless provider in the small towns that were deprived of connectivity in the past because the, the bigger players are moving into those areas. Um, so the WISP will need to diversify in what they do and how they do it. And at WAPA, we are gladly mentor and assist with training and business planning to enable you to do that with good um, equipment and good design planning with companies like Miro, who've got a vast product range of mm, equipment, software services, and across the board to be able to help you because we work closely together. So moving forward to a bright 2022, is it all doom and gloom? No, it, it's not at all. I just think it's a time where we literally have to change the, the way we're doing and what we're doing. Um, the last threat that I see moving into 2022, it's really imminent that the high demand spectrum auction will take place uh, from ICASA and big chunks of high demand spectrum are going to be issued across their six big players. Um, what will that enable them to do is uh, carry on and start rolling out their 5G networks and alleviate a lot of the pressure 
on the LTE uh, core, core networks. We've already seen that um, LTE, I mean with Rain tried the model of an uncapped LTE service and MTN is now offering LTE services with data caps so high that it's almost un un unlimited, well, six, seven hundred um, gig, then throttled down to four meg. With this new spectrum, there is a very big chance that both on 5G and um, LTEA that they will start offering truly uncapped LTE services. And again, that is another thing that the WISP must be prepared for to have in their artillery um, ways of competing with those services um, on both quality, price uh, you know, and customer retention. Because remember, it's, uh, it's a lot easier to retain a client than to get a new one. Mm. And that's where we're, we're moving forward to try and do. So is it doom and gloom in 2022? Not at all. It's just a time of change. And that, you know, WAPA, we're there to help you. And Miro is here to help you. And I hope and I wish you a very prosperous 2022. And thanks, thank you for listening to me. And if you require any help, further information, you want to become a, a WAPA member or find out what WAPA can do for you and the other, other things that we've got going, don't hesitate to contact us. So thank you and enjoy the rest of your day at Miro IPCon 2021. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Paul, for that engaging look into the services that WAPA offers in our environment and in our industry. It is a pleasure to work with you and your team, and we are delighted that we can provide our value-added services like our Miro Academy learning uh, experience to you and the WAPA members to help take our industry and our communities that much further. Now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, we're going to be doing our second giveaway and our quiz. Uh, we're going to speed things up a little bit this time because we just wanted to make sure everyone was comfortable with how the system worked. Uh, but again, awesome prizes up for grabs. Can everyone head over to their smartphone, get into Kahoot. I'm going to give you your game pin now. All right, once everyone's there, I just want you to make sure that you go live on the stream, uh, but make sure that you fill out your answers on your smartphone devices and you'll be able to see the leaderboard um, on your desktop. Um, and just a reminder, our breakaway sessions for later this afternoon where our vendors will be taking center stage in the description below. Please make sure that you go and you reserve your seats for those sessions, they're gonna be really good. Uh, but the game pin, for our second Kahoot is 4660236. That's 4660236. Will Captain Wolf take two for two? We'll see you soon.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin our second Kahoot quiz now. Uh, my money's on the lucky hen and the Nobel uh, Panther. I think Swift Crane might take it though at the end. Lively Ostrich is looking pretty, pretty good as well. Let's begin.
All right. Well, it seems like Hero Squid is in the lead, but followed very closely by Lovely Glider, who had an aggressive start to Quiz 2. Will Genius Llama and Mountain Bat make a comeback, or will Classy Tiger surprise us all? We've got three questions left. A nail-biting finish there right at the end. My money was on the Genius Llama, but you came in third, and I'll take it. Lovely Glider, you started off very well, but you've taken silver. And our winner today is Hero Squid. And you are the proud winner of this all-in-one video conferencing uh, speaker and camera. Um, we'll be sure to contact you at the end of the day. Uh, thank you for joining this Kahoot session. We are now going to go into a brief intermission. If you want to go grab a, a glass of water or do a little bit of a stretch, do it now and we'll see you in under five minutes.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. And this next tech talk is one that we hold very close to our hearts. It is the bread and butter of what Miro does and who we are. And it is essentially our history. Fixed broadband wireless. We're very excited to do this tech talk with you today. And back by popular demand is Maggie Kruger, who is going to be going through the history of wireless, why it was born, where it came from and what is the roadmap going forward. Take it away, Maggie. At Miro, we are fortunate to be able to offer all the largest fixed wireless brands like Radwin, Cambium, Mimosa, Microtik and Ubiquiti, providing you with a solution that not only suits your pocket but also your requirements. But why are these such a success and what is the technology driving this multi-billion dollar industry? Well, in order to look at the technology, we also need to look at the history of fixed wireless broadband. At the end of the previous century, well, actually not that long ago, this magical new device appeared that allowed you to connect computers, servers, and other networking nodes wirelessly. This was Wi-Fi, a name the IEEE coined in 1997, along with the 802.11 standard which they created, ensuring interoperability between various wireless equipment manufacturers. At this stage, the maximum data transmission rate was a whopping 2 megabits per second, which was great as the internet speeds at the time was less than 512 kilobits per second, and the medium had more than enough capacity to carry all this traffic. In 1999, the 802.11b standard was released, widely seen as the first actual wireless standard, facilitating the first widespread implementation of the wireless local area network, or WLAN technology, delivering transmission speeds of 11 megabits per second, a little bit more than five times than that of its predecessor. It was also this technology that Miro brought to market when we were founded in 2002. Four years later, in 2003, the IEEE released the 802.11g standard. Up until now, all the Wi-Fi standards operated on the 2.4 GHz frequency, but the frequency spectrum was limited and only allowed for 11 channels, which meant that as Wi-Fi technology was more widely adopted, more and more wireless networks started overlapping, causing interference. With 802.11g, another standard, 802.11a, came to be. But this standard now operated on the 5 GHz spectrum, which was much wider and had more channels to use. This meaning chances of crippling interference on the network was much less. We now saw transmission rates of 54 megabits per second on both standards. Again, a substantial five times more than the previous standard. And this tech lasted many years as the over-the-air network speeds were significantly more than the available internet speeds at the time. But you cannot stop progress. And in 2009, the very well-known 802.11n standard was born. It now was able to incorporate both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz frequencies on a single device and used more antennas and more streams of data called MIMO, or multiple input, multiple output, meaning you also got much faster data rates and much better reliability. A dual band router with both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz could now deliver speeds of up to 600 megabits per second, 300 megabits per second per frequency. Available internet speeds were still nowhere near this. From here, multiple stream technology running over the two frequencies was further developed to create the 802.11ac standard that was launched in 2013. It nearly tripled the transmission rates of its predecessor, but with manufacturers adding more streams, the standard quickly broke the gigabit per second barrier. Later, the MU-MIMO standard was adopted into the standard, creating what is called 802.11ac wave 2, and throughput speeds skyrocketed, all while range, simultaneous connections to an AP and throughput was improved and latency was reduced. 2020 saw the release of the 802.11ax standard that took all the technology from the previous standards, improved it and added a few more brilliant features that is sure to rapidly speed up the adoption of IoT. But more on this in our Wi-Fi session. So I'm sure most of you are asking, what does all of this Wi-Fi jargon have to do with fixed wireless solutions? Since Wi-Fi provides short range connectivity to the user device and fixed wireless provides connectivity over long range to the home and business. 
Well, all the fixed wireless technologies we offer utilize a 2.4, but mostly 5 GHz frequencies. And it just makes economical sense to use the very same chipsets as those used for Wi-Fi. Plus, a lot of the tech, such as MU-MIMO, is very useful in outdoor wireless networks. There are, however, a few fascinating features that were added to fixed wireless, allowing us to push the limits of wireless connectivity. Firstly, outdoor wireless networks are much more scalable. And thanks to some great antenna technology, such as RF elements, major wireless networks can be deployed much quicker than fiber networks and can reach areas that fiber cannot or where fiber is not feasible. Depending on the equipment you choose, you are now able to reach distances of between a few hundred meters all the way up to about 40 kilometers in a point to multipoint configuration. Another one of these features was the addition of the TDMA protocol. Wireless point to multipoint connectivity from an access point or base station is structured into multiple different time slots. Each user gets a time slot of a few milliseconds. That user, let's call it user one, will then in its time slot communicate with the base station. And once it has reached its time limit, the base station will then move on to user 2, 3, 4, and so on. This means that network traffic remains consistent with predictable low latencies. This is a subsequential approach and much more organized than standard Wi-Fi connectivity, which allows any user to communicate in any available time slot. Since the 5 GHz spectrum is mostly ISM or free to use, it is a frequency of choice for point to multipoint networks. But unfortunately, that also means interference could be an issue, especially in crowded metro areas. Modern radios now boast intelligent filtering tech that allows radios to only listen to the portion of the channel it uses and filter out overlapping noise from other radios within the same spectrum. GPS synchronization assists to reduce interference by synchronizing the sending and receiving of wireless traffic. Beamforming is another technology that improves network stability and almost entirely eliminates interference, especially in technologies utilizing both downlink and uplink. Earlier, we also mentioned MIMO and MU-MIMO. With its multiple streams released under 802.11 AC and the benefits it holds to not only Wi-Fi, but also outdoor wireless networks. We also mentioned time slots. In simple terms, MU-MIMO allows an access point or base station to communicate with not just one, but multiple subscribers in the same time slot. This increases throughput and reduces latency on the network. Manufacturers have also turned toward Micropop solutions, which is small cell technology, encompassing all of the above mentioned tech but at a smaller scale, with smaller antennas, <laughs> giving network providers the added advantage of cost-effective, simplified deployments that can be deployed in larger numbers, getting closer to the customers quicker, and it's especially beneficial in areas with high density, where large numbers of customers need to be connected fast or where network growth is required. All this technology provides highly reliable networks that allow network providers to build, like with fiber, open access networks. These open access networks allow multiple service providers to utilize existing infrastructure, reaching vast distances to get to large number of potential new customers quicker, without each ISP building their own networks. One such example is the Rush network. Manufacturers of wireless solutions over the years have also made some fantastic value adds available to us, making planning, installation and maintenance of all small to large scale networks seamless with great software tool sets at little to no additional cost. Radwin, as an example, have what they call the OSS tool set, guiding you every step of the way. From planning your network to ensure optimal coverage and capacity by using the correct equipment for your application, to managing and real-time monitoring of your network rollout and efficiency. You can even preload radio configuration to the WinTouch app on the technician's Android or iOS phone. And once they do the physical installation, they can upload this config directly from the app to the radio on site. Cambium has a similar functionality in their CN Maestro network management system, or NMS, which can manage configuration and maintenance right down to the Wi-Fi access point or router in the home 
or business of the customer. Others, such as Ubiquiti, Mimosa and Mikrotik, all have their own versions of NMS, each with their own unique benefits. Don't forget to join each of the sessions on these brands to learn more about what they have to offer. Other software tool sets available from Miro include Splinks and Bequant that any wireless network operator should have in their toolkits. Splinks is a phenomenal all-in-one ISP billing and management solution which is very popular among most ISPs worldwide. And Bequant is an almost magical network acceleration tool that allows you to get more out of your network than you ever thought possible, without having to make any costly hardware upgrades. Make sure not to miss these sessions hosted by Splinks and Bequant. For any further information or if you have any questions about this session, please do not hesitate to contact any of our expert sales engineers today. Thank you, Maggie, for once again enlightening us about the updates in the wireless broadband industry. Now we're going to take a bit of a side note towards one of our partners that are doing some very innovative things in our industry, specifically on broadband wireless. Let's hear from them. But before we go there, I just wanted to make sure that we all are aware that there are breakaway sessions happening later in the afternoon. Please check the link below to secure your spot. Over to you, Rush. It is not financially feasible to deploy fiber networks to all homes and businesses. Those working and living outside of fiber areas also require access to fast, reliable and affordable connectivity. Wireless is the only way to do this fast and affordably. The Rush Network can do this at scale. The Rush Network is an open access fixed wireless network used by leading South African ISPs to create and sell their own white labeled fixed wireless services. This enables ISPs to reach thousands of customers previously neglected by network infrastructure providers. We have built the core network infrastructure from the ground up with speed, reliability, affordability, scalability and ISPs in mind. Service providers on the Rush network have full visibility and complete control over the network and the services they sell. Gone are the days of inefficiencies by ISPs providing delayed and lacking customer service on a network that they ca cannot monitor, manage or troubleshoot themselves, always having to play the middleman. Thus, ISPs have full API and web portal access to monitor and manage their customer services. Our in-house software development team continues to add additional functionality, control and visibility into the API and web portal as requested by service providers. Is fiber not replacing wireless technologies? Although fiber is the preferred technology to connect to the internet at an affordable rate, fiber isn't available in many areas. The Rush network is the perfect solution where fiber is not available. Better uptime is required and as a reliable backup on fiber. What makes the Rush network different? With the in-house developed ISP portal and API, ISPs can instantly check coverage, order services and track the status of orders and upgrade or downgrade services instantly. Offer your customers the best support with portal and API features like CPE support status, link tests, wireless signal strength with historical graphs, remote reboot of equipment, and other troubleshooting tools to put the information and power in the hands of your support team. ISPs can truly offer services on the Rush network as if it's their own, without having to spend all the capital to build their own network. What infrastructure and technologies do you use? To ensure that ISPs are able to offer customers the best possible service, we made sure we use the best possible combination of technologies on the network. We bring fiber as close to the edge of the network and customers as possible. Where available, all our towers are connected to carrier grade fiber backhaul to offer the best speeds and lowest latency. 
For additional redundancy and where fiber is not available, we make use of multiple high-speed, low-latency microwave backhaul links from leading manufacturers like SIA and Siklu, connected to other Rush network towers in the area. We make use of Cambium Network's PMP450M Medusa last mile equipment between subscribers and our high sites. With massive Mu MIMO and beamforming technologies, we can offer point-to-point -point equivalent services at scale, at a fraction of the cost traditionally available. ISPs can interconnect with the Rush network at any of the three Terraco data centers in Isando in Johannesburg, Rondebosch Cape Town, and Riverhorse Valley in Durban. We offer 1 gig, 10 gig, 40 gig, and 100 gig redundant dual port options to connect to our dual homed Juniper and Arista core network. Most of the high sites on the Rush network are fully owned and maintained by us to offer the lowest interference and highest reliability. All towers have standby power to ensure that load shedding and power outages do not negatively impact network uptime. Our security control room monitors the towers 24 hours a day for intruders to take action immediately before any downtime can be caused by criminals. How wide is the Rush network coverage area? The current network covers a total population of over 12 million people, including 4 million homes and 1.2 million businesses. Our network reach keeps on growing at a rapid pace to where the demand is. How do I get connected to the Rush Network? Leading ISPs sell their own wireless packages on the Rush Network. Visit www.rushnetwork.co.za to find out which ISPs are available on the network or ISPs you can sign up as an ISP on the Rush Network. What about latency? Subscribers get very low latencies of 10 to 20 milliseconds on the Rush network, making it ideal for cloud services such as Office 365, Google Suite, accounting and ERP systems, and online gaming. What speeds are available? Currently, we offer up to 50 megabits per second services on the Rush network while continuously upgrading to the latest technologies to offer even faster for less in the future. How long does it take to install? Installations take about three hours and are done within five working days from order. If a certified installer is in the area, the installation may happen on the same day. How do ISPs check network coverage? ISPs can check Rush network coverage instantly via the ISP portal or API integrated with the existing systems and procedures. How does mirror distribution and Cambium networks contribute to the success of the Rush network? Myra distribution plays a key role in to provide local warehousing for quick access to core and subscriber hardware and competitive pricing as the Rush network and subscriber base expands. As one of Cambium Network's larger clients in Africa, they have over the years set a great example as a technology partner, offering us direct access to top engineers, resources and alpha phase product testing. Their class leading hardware and technologies are developed with network operators like us in mind and helps the Rush network stand out above the rest. What is the next step for ISPs interested in the Rush network? Our friendly channel team is here to assist ISPs to expand their service offering by adding Rush Network fixed wireless connectivity and can be contacted for more information. Thank you Rush Networks. It's always compelling to see how our partners are using innovative solutions to deliver services to the customers in our industry. 
Next up, we're going to be looking at another Kahoot quiz. If everyone wants to head over to their smartphones, the game pen is 102236. And just a reminder for everyone participating that the winner is the fastest and the most accurate to answer all the questions. So you don't just get marks for answering accurately, you get marks for how quickly you respond to the questions plus how accurately.
All right, is everyone ready to begin our next Kahoot quiz? There are some awesome prizes up for grabs. Um, who's going to take it today? Will it be Flying Iguana? Will the cheetah be focused? Or will the sea lion power it through? Let's wait and see.
All right, so it looks like Diligent Elk has overtaken Amazon B, who I thought had it in the bag. Looks like they are followed closely by a decisive Jaguar. Will the fast Meerkat sprint into the lead? Or will the ferret shine its way through? Let's wait and see. Wow, another scintillating Kahoot quiz with Amazon B coming out on top. But well done to the Red Turtle and the Fast Meerkat. Unfortunately, you just weren't fast enough. So to Amazon B, my money was you on you from the start. You are the proud winner of a Liga Wave DLB integrated radio. We'll be sure to make sure that this finds its way to you. For those that are losing a question or two throughout the session, it might be because of it, your internet dropping, but Never fear, we're going to be having a lot more quizzes throughout today and tomorrow, and we'll also have an overall uh, winner when we announce at the end of day two. We're going to be going into our last intermission for the day, so thank you for being with us. Uh, we've really enjoyed our uh, live stream today. Uh, it's the first time we've done something of this nature, and we really appreciate everyone for joining us, and we hope that you found this um, IPCon engaging and enjoyable and productive. Um, but we'll see you next for security.
Thank you for joining us for our last session of the day. We're going to be looking at our security portfolio, specifically looking at facial recognition and access control technologies. We have our colleague Ralph diving a little bit deeper into this segment. Take it away, Ralph. Effective security systems has and will always play a very important part within our lives as it gives us that fighting chance to keep our loved ones, homes and businesses safe. Protecting what is yours is your number one priority and unfortunately the hard truth is many people only invest in an effective surveillance or security system after a break-in or incident occurred. So always be prepared and be proactive when it comes to surveillance and invest once, it will give you good peace of mind. Now let's look at what is currently happening in the industry, the challenges the industry are facing and more importantly, the solutions to help you address these challenges. We see numerous of unforeseen challenges in the last two years, all the way from the pandemic to aggressive riots and chipset shortages. Over and above, South Africa's unemployment rate unfortunately increased tremendously over the last two years, which automatically linked to an increase in crime rates. This basically means that people are desperate and they're willing to turn to crime in order to survive. So this is a very tragic and sad position that we are in. However, with that being said, surveillance and security systems have never been as important as it is right now. Therefore, I highly suggest that when you choose a surveillance brand, choose wisely. I've men mentioned just a couple of challenges that South Africa faces. So now let's look at the challenges that the security industry, specifically focusing on access control and time and attendance, as well as the IP surveillance industry are facing. I'll start off with the surveillance industry. End users struggled with too many false alarms, as well as weak scene adaptability. False alarms are a very dangerous, dangerous thing in the surveillance industry and once an end user experiences a few, they stop looking at the alarms, this causing a few things to slip through the cracks. So Uniview supports exciting affordable deep learning cameras that include a feature called Smart Intrusion Prevention, which is basically in a nutshell a feature that gives the camera the capability to be only on the lookout for either people, motorcycles or vehicles or combined, depending on what you need. This feature is used in combination with crossline and intrusion detection, which is, in my opinion, the two best medium end smart features in the market. So these features really helps keep the false alarm rate to a minimum. And it will also help you save bandwidth and storage. And lastly, it will give you more peace of mind as your surveillance system will only go to work when it has to. To simplify matters even more, you can search your events quicker by going through the pedestrian and vehicle files that is now available. This is quite beneficial, especially if you have, multi especially if you have multiple cameras installed on a site, as it helps you find footage of a specific camera quick and easy. So we have tried and tested the SIP feature on the Uniview systems, and it really works wonderfully, as there are very few false alarms that slip through. Please remember that it is extremely important that when you install these cameras to try to work with the camera, meaning if you really want the false alarm rates to be reduced by at least 99%, install the camera in such a way that, is, that it's not monitoring any moving leaves of a tree, for example, as that does put strain on the camera, which could cause a few false alarm triggers. So another challenge that the industry is facing is weak scene adaptability meaning that the image at night is not good enough anymore. Once again, Uniview supports a feature called Light Hunter technology, which, which basically keeps your image in color until it really gets too dark, basically delaying the infrared from kicking in. This is a very effective feature that is available on the entire AccuSide, DeepSide and AlphaView series, which we will get into in the Uniview presentation. So this feature is another reason why these cameras have a very low false alarm rate. To go a step further, Uniview cameras support 24-7 color footage, meaning your footage, your footage will stay in color in complete darkness via using two built-in warm lights. This is a very effective feature as it causes false alarms to be more accurate. The reason why the Color Hunter feature is so popular is simply because infrared does not always give you enough details such as a person's face, license plates or the color of the vehicle. This is a very good revolutionary technology that is gaining traction in the market. These Color Hunter cameras 
also supports smart intrusion prevention, giving you, a, giving you a more accurate alarm rate. So interactiveness of a surveillance system is critical nowadays as it allows your cameras to take lead even when you're not there. So Uniview released a, a feature called Active Deterrence, which is basically cameras that have built-in sirens and blue and red strobe lights that will get triggered once it detects a person or a car in a certain area. This is a great new technology that is becoming very popular in the market. The active deterrence feature is available on certain mini outdoor PTZ cameras as well as a few mini bullet cameras. The next topic is the infamous analog is cheaper than IP surveillance. This has been a topic for far too long and yes analog is cheaper when buying the physical camera but the price to install these cameras are just not worth it. IP surveillance is easy and simple one cable per camera or more commonly known as PoE power over Ethernet giving the camera data and power via one cable. IP cameras support more exciting revolutionary features such as facial recognition, smart intrusion prevention and many more at a very affordable rate. So Uniview has launched a new series called the A series which is basically mini domes and mini bullets with a dis disruptive price point when compared to the analog market. So another promising aspect that Uniview offers their clients is the free software from entry level up until the VMS softwares. It is completely free with no monthly payments meaning less headaches for you and your client. For more information on the software, please feel free to visit Uniview's website. Ease of installation and user friendliness is and will always play a major aspect in any installer and end user's uh, choice when choosing a surveillance system. So Ring has knocked this out of the park by providing a complete Wi-Fi connected camera range all controllable from a Ring app. This is perfect for your house as it supports the complete home surveillance and IoT solution from video doorbells, IP cameras, solar panels, all the way to alarms and sensors, which will be coming soon. This all support ground foundation features such as two-way talk, built-in sirens, live notifications, motion detection features, and many more. But what makes Ring special? Your system is a complete ecosystem, and there are even cameras that are powered via special rechargeable Ring batteries that is included in the packaging of all battery powered cameras. This helping you to keep your system online even when ESCOM strikes again. All that is required from you is to buy a small UPS to keep your Wi-Fi router up and running and to keep your surveillance system on at all times. So Ring has recently launched many exciting features as well as new cameras and alarm systems. As mentioned before, all these different cameras and alarms are controlled through the simple to use Ring mobile app. Another benefit Ring offers, offers you is that you can have your footage saved in the cloud. Ring cloud footage is a monthly subscription that you can activate directly through the Ring app. You get the protection plus plan, which is $10 a month or $100 annually. And that includes all the Ring devices at one address, basically meaning you can add as much, as, much devices as you want at your home. This plan provide, will also provide you a 60 days of backup footage. There is a basic plan as well, which is $3 per month for one device, and it also includes 60 days of backup footage. Please remember that the Protection Plus plans are only used for backup storage, meaning if you don't want your storage to be saved on the uh, in the cloud, you can always use the app for live notifications. All the great Ring features will still be available. The only difference is your footage will not be saved. Another thing to remember is that you can add multiple users on your Ring app as long as the administrator of the entire system gives that specific person authorization to log in. So in the access control and time and attendance industry, we have faced so many challenges due to the pandemic. Companies don't want their employees to touch a time and attendance device or access control terminals anymore. So ZK Tech has stepped up way before the pandemic and created a very good touchless solution so effective you'll be surprised. So within the access control and time and attendance industry, many companies have struggled with facial recognition accuracy and the speed of the readings for many years now. So facial recognition has gone through trial and error phases for a while and ZK Techo has nearly perfected it with their visible light series. Their touchless visible light terminals have recognition speeds of less than a second 
and, you can e and it can even detect you while you've got your mask on. To top it all off, these units support anti-spoofing algorithms, meaning you can't hold a picture or a video of a uh, in front of the terminal of a person that is authorized on the system. The terminal will simply ignore it. This increasing your safety of your entire security solution. They also support a vast range of turnstiles, hotel locks, smart locks, boom gates, time attendance, and access control software, and many more. So within the Visible Light series, it contains mainly out of three devices. The ZK Teco Speedface Mini, which is an affordable indoor access control and time attendance terminal that supports face and palm recognition of up to 800 templates, making it ideal for small to medium businesses. The next terminal in the range is the Speedface V5L, which is an enterprise indoor access control terminal because it supports more faces and palm templates, as well as fingerprint and RFID recognition, giving you that all-in-one solution. So the last device is the ProFace X, which is the flagship terminal of the Visible Light series. This device is used for outdoor access control applications and it supports palm and face recognition. Perfect for entrance control solutions such as estate boom gates, uh, business, business park boom gate areas and many more. All these devices are linked back to ZK Teco's online reporting software called Biosecurity and Biotime. A major benefit of these softwares being cloud-based is you can have multiple sites all over South Africa, meaning you're not limited and you can get, and you can get your report um, from anywhere in the world. I only mentioned a few solutions in their portfolio, but they've got such a vast portfolio within ZK Teco. And if you are interested in ZK Teco, please remember to watch the presentation later in IPCOM. Finally, ZK Teco is local, meaning support and stock availability is fast and reliable. They also provide new clients with free online training in order to get them up to speed as quick as possible. So as I mentioned, the security industry is growing rapidly and there are many cutting edge technologies available in order to help us build a long lasting and reliable security system. We have worked with all the above mentioned brands for years now and we firmly believe that these brands will definitely make a major difference in the security market. Thank you. Thank you, Rolf, for that profound look into the security industry. It's really incredible that this age-old industry continues to grow and flourish. And we're very pleased to say that we are at the frontier of the industry's development and we have the highest grade, best of breed security products. So thank you, Rolf, for that awesome tech talk. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going into our last Kahoot session. So again, of course, we've got awesome prizes up for grabs. Just a reminder that this is the last uh, live session of today. We will be going into our breakaway rooms at two o'clock. So those are really going to be specific towards our vendors. And if you're wanting to have a look at to who is going to be speaking today, have a look at our registration uh, link in the description below. But for now, let's head over to Kahoot. I'll give you guys about five seconds to head over. Cool. And remember, once you're there, the way that Kahoot is played is that you have to ma maintain a stable inter internet connection throughout the entirety of the quiz. And it's the fastest and most accurate participant who's going to take home the gold. So once everyone's by Kahoot, I'm going to give you your game pin. It is 7239852. That's 7239852. Best of luck.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin our last Kahoot session. Let's see who's got what it takes. Will it be the awesome panda, the diligent goat, or will the expert goose take it home? Let's wait and see. Best of luck.
All right, with three questions left, it's the noble bat that has taken a commanding lead. But his estranged cousin, the kind bat, is following closely in second. Will Golden Turtle win the race in the end? Or will the Purple Snail pull out a surprise? My money's on the Rocky Swan. Let's see how it goes. Three questions left. It looks like my bet paid off in the end with Rocky Swan taking our bronze medal. It seems our bat contestants were having a little bit of a winged competition and Noble Bat came in with the silver. And we'd like to honestly say slow and steady wins the race and they get the gold. Congratulations to the turtle that is golden. You are the proud winner of this delightful TP-Link security camp. We'll be sure to get a hold of you soon. Thank you everyone for joining us on day one of IPCon. Did you enjoy today? Let us know in the comments section. Like, subscribe and stay tuned for tomorrow where we'll have another enthralling day of Miro's IP Convergence Conference. But before I go, a last word. We are not done with our complete um, experience. Our breakaway sessions are happening at 2 o'clock with all of our vendors. Make sure to book and to register and we'll see you there. Thank you.